the boy in blue and red gets reborn, you should look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse DC Rebirth Superman. Sent to Earth from the dying planet of Krypton as baby Kal-El, was found by farmers Martha and Jonathan Kent and raised as their son Clark. As Clark grew up, the radiation from the Earth's yellow sun gave him extraordinary powers which he kept hidden. Now fully grown, he uses his powers to protect his adopted world as Superman. The Man of Steel is virtually invulnerable and has the powers of super strength, super speed, and flight. He also has enhanced senses, including heat vision, x-ray vision, super hearing, and super breath. More on the Man of Steel in a moment. First, let's grab the ruler to figure out how tall the DC Rebirth Superman stands. If looking at this correctly, Superman stands about seven and a quarter inches. He might even be closer to seven three eighths of an inch, which works out to be a figure that's about 18 and a half centimeters tall. And how does soup stack up with other Superman figures that we've gotten from DC Multiverse? Let's bring a couple of comparisons right now. Though this isn't the original Superman, it would have shared then the same body as the originally released Superman, but this is the one that came included with that Destroyer Batman from, I think, Earth-1, where you can see he has a more angrier look on his face. Still same body. You can already see the newer Superman from DC Rebirth is a lot bulkier than the originally released Superman. We can also bring in the animated series Superman, even though it's not from the same universe. It's also something that also the McFarlane team has brought out. And just to free up a little bit of space between the two Superman, we can also bring in as well the Red Sun Superman, which I already thought, again, was going to be a bigger, bulkier figure. But when you really compare that Red Sun Superman along with the regular Superman, which are sharing the same bodies, you only now see how they're dwarfed against the bigger backdrop of the newer Superman we get from the DC Rebirth line. The sad news for Superman is that he doesn't come with much in the way of accessories. The first thing we'll have a look at is his trading card. And again, using figure photography. It actually looks different, this specific Superman, especially when you look at his head sculpt compared with the one that we actually get as the figure. But still like the way that they've lit this and at least they've got like a cityscape behind him. They haven't just literally put him in front of like a gray background. That would get pretty boring real fast. And you can see down below, it's also got Superman from the DC Rebirth comic run. And then on the back, real name still is the same. So Kal-El Clark Kent adoptive name. They had to put the adoptive name next to it. And as well, there's a substantial read-up that you can either read for yourself or it happened to be also the same thing I read at the beginning of this review as well. You get yourself a trading card. I know some people don't really like the trading cards. I like them. I just wish, again, they could go back to using actual artwork pulled from the actual pages of the comic, not really relying on figure photography this whole time. The figure also comes included with a display stand, which makes up the rest of his accessories. The display stand, at least to its credit, is the flight stand. So instead of getting like the traditional black stand, which I don't happen to have in front of me, you would think I have all of these display stands in front of me. I could easily just pull one of them. But the regular traditional black stand, we, not, we don't actually get here with Superman. What we get instead is two parts of a stand. You get the main bottom base, which if you wanted to use just on its own, it does still have one peg and a DC logo down below that you can then take Superman and use the provided holes on the bottoms of his feet. Attaching those, of course. There we go. You can also use it just as a regular display stand. It doesn't have to necessarily use the flight neck. If you did want to use that though, go ahead and just take the figure, put him back down on his own. Try not to knock the figure down. Whoops, in the process, just put him back down here, flatten out his feet. Here we go. Take then the bottom of the base, take then the neck. It's not adjustable, at least this up to this part is. The rest of it's just plastic, just molded plastic. But what you do is just slot this in. See, there's a little opening down below here. I know it's pretty straightforward. Just take that, slide in place, get a nice little satisfying snap. I found these ones in the past have had difficult time of removing. Uh, the Superman doesn't seem to be an issue, and I've noticed some of the later ones that had the flight stands like the Batman Beyond also didn't give me any problems. But yeah, just slide that in place, lock it into place, and then you can go ahead and take the waist clip. You can open it up. You can probably also see as well, it's got a ratcheted joint. You open it and close that. You can do one of two things. First of all, you can just move the cape out of the way because, of course, that's going to get in the way of things. Clip this around Soup's waist, and you can kind of have him levitating like that over top of the, the figures that you would have around him. Well, another thing you can also do, too, is that you can take that same stand and tilt it forward. And then, of course, bring his arms up, 
bring his head up, which isn't really unfortunately easy to do with this particular Superman. More on that in a second. You can actually have Superman more in a flight pose. This would work so much better if he had the means to actually be able to tilt his head back, but unfortunately you can't do that. Taking then Superman and just freeing him from his display stand. Unfortunately, again, that, that's all the, th all the stuff that really comes with the figure. He does have closed fists. And the reasoning why I draw your attention to the closed fist, first of all, is the fact that he doesn't come with any other options for hands. Superman always seems to come with flat hands, especially if you're going to put him in a flight pose. You can't do that, unfortunately, because the figure only has closed fists. I really think there was an opportunity missed on McFarlane's part by not including alternate hands, so he didn't have to just rely on closed fists the whole time. The figure also doesn't come included with any other accessories, but to be really fair, even if you came included, or it came included with any other things than what you're seeing right now, you really wouldn't have had the hands to hold them anyways. A little bar, a little shard of kryptonite certainly would be nice thing, because I don't think we've actually gotten kryptonite yet, released with any of the figures from the DC Multiverse line. Anyways, again, like the, the hands are disappointing, the fact that they are closed fists, and they're always going to be in closed fists. I guess technically as well, not popping the hand off in the process. Let me just grab that. Hold on one second. I was certainly not expecting the hand to pop off like that, but just putting it back onto its peg. What I meant to say was you could actually take the arms and bend them. So if you want to have Superman sort of in a heroic pose, yeah, you could do that. But yeah, it still would have been nice. would have been nice that they could have included alternate hands as well. Really wasn't having expecting that hand to pop off like that. Getting a closer look at Superman's face, it certainly is, from my standpoint at least, one of the best Superman head sculpts that we've gotten from the McFarlane line so far. Whatever your feelings may be when it comes to the DC Rebirth body, it's not your traditional Superman body sort of leaving off the under ruse color and leaving it more to the, just an all blue from head to toe. I gotta say though, it is definitely one of the better head sculpts we've gotten from Superman. From all the sides, it certainly does read as the Man of Steel. It has a really nice side profile going for it. And they have put some nice additional coloring on it too. The skin initially I thought may have been off colored, but the more time I'm spending looking at it, I feel like the coloring is right. They have also gone in there and added some additional shadowing around the eyes, which is maybe one of the things that may have left me thinking that the, the skin tone was a little jarring or out of place. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a great looking head sculpt from all the sides that you see it. And it does have Superman's traditional S curl. Although in this case, you're actually getting two curls for the price of one. Yeah, no complaints at all with the head sculpt. I mean, really, it is one of the best ones, I feel at least, that we've gotten from the DC Multiverse line. And we really don't have a lot of Superman. It's more seems to be a line that favors the Cape Crusader. But what Superman we have gotten, I got to feel like this is one of the best ones that we've gotten so far. As it certainly comes for his body, I mean, one of the things I like about this particular Superman is he's very broad, very thick in the neck, and certainly that thickness continues to go as it goes all the way down his body. Like, he's got a very full frame here. It's sculpted well, and I like the coloring that they decided to go with. A slight break of coloring here where you have the more traditional matte-colored red on both his belt, his, well, not lower boots, but the panel lining above his boots, is also matched to that of his cape. But where they have breaking it up, broken it up, is by having this raised emblem in front of his chest that actually does have it done in metallic red. And I think the metallic red works quite well. I feel like this is also the same body that they've used for Bizarro, making me realize I should have brought in the Bizarro for comparisons as well. I think it's probably this very similar, if not identical, bodies that they've used between the two. But I gotta, I gotta say, it works really well for Superman here. Now, the plastic I've noticed here with his arms, I'm not sure why the coloring is so dark here and much lighter here. I mean, the plastic material, it's not a case where this is necessarily softer, and sometimes that's one of the things. There is a little bit of give to it. Not sure if you can tell as I'm pinching against it with my thumb. There's a little bit of pliability to the plastic, but not to the point where I feel like the color should be off like this because they're quite a bit darker here in his arms. Uh, there is some nice wrinkling that they've sculpted to the body, so it looks like it's quite fitted against his body. And it's not just a simple sculpted body either. Like, they've added all this nice little... And they just move his arms out of the way so you can see. Some really nice additional panel lining. It's not painted, no, but at least they've actually sculpted it into his body. It just adds a little bit something extra to look at. Of course, yeah, I mentioned already, he doesn't have the lower red underoos. But he does have at least those underoos done in the same plastic color as the rest of his body. A really, again, nice dark blue that they've used. Again, the boots are also something that has to get forfeited with the design of DC Rebirth Superman, so you don't have the lower boots with the familiar M on the top. Instead, what you get is like an, a head-to-toe, all-blue body. 
And then you've got just little indicators here, the panel lining of the red down above it. The panel lining, unfortunately, this is one issue I have really with this figure. While looking at this, you can clearly see there's a sculpting going on right here that I wish they could have just retooled this. Going back, I would have to look at the DC Rebirth body again, at least the costume that he has in the, in the comics, to see if he really has that. I feel like that's not the case at all. This is a case where I feel like they just kept the boots on that were on the original figure, which again leads me to believe that this was used from the Bizarro figure that we've gotten before. And they just simply have painted the right above it. I feel that's a bit lazy if that's the case. Why wouldn't they have just smoothed this off? It would have had to, of course, rely on a brand new body mold. And I'm sure that at some point they're probably going to release this body again for Superman. I'm not sure if whether they're going to do like a new 52 Superman. That would be kind of interesting. Or even just a classic Superman using this same type of body. I don't like this, though. I'm not crazy about the fact that that's still sculpted in there. But uh, yeah, well, the rest of the body, even like the back of the area of his body underneath his cape, sculpted very well for the fact that really is so much more blue than your traditional blue and red Superman. Let's talk a little bit about the figure's articulation now. We're going to start things off, of course, in all the places. We're going to start with his head sculpt. One last time to see up close, as close as possibly I can get it. Yeah, that's such a nice looking head sculpt. Even like the fact that they've actually painted that little pupils in on the inside of his eyes. You kind of see there's a little bit of that dot printing that they're doing now with a lot of their figures. You only really see it on Superman's eyes and nowhere else in the rest of his body. Very nice use of coloring there as well. It seems like it's a little bit darker here also around the areas of his cheek that really accents his high muscular cheekbones. Anyways, let's talk about the figure's articulation. Head rotates, yes, all the way around. Head looks up to about there, which I guess I could have I could have pulled a better pose of having it in flight. The head can only go really to that extent. I mean, again, the length of his hair on the back sort of does limit a little bit, of it, but it certainly was a little higher than I thought immediately. Uh, the head, of course, can rotate all the way around, too. You can also rock it back and forth this way. You can take, then, the arms. Those arms, though a little tight on this figure, can still comfortably give you 90 degrees. You can take, then, the same arms and rotate those all the way around. You can swivel, yes, at the bicep. You can double hinge on the elbow, sure. Yeah, you can also rotate the hands all the way around. Let's just hope the hands don't pop off anymore in this uh, in this review. Upper torso is on a ball joint. And then a little further that, than that, there's a little torso, lower torso, abdomen area uh, uh, ball joint. So you rotate that all the way around. So really between the top and the bottom, there's a lot of mileage happening here. So let's just, again, bend the torso up a little bit, bring the head up as high as we can get it. Yeah, that's a lot better. The only thing that's really missing from this pose... Yeah, the only thing that's really missing from this pose is relaxed hands, or flat hands, where you could display the Man of Steel with. That's probably going to be how I'm going to display him a little bit later on. As for the legs, the legs split out. This is softer plastic. Uh, sometimes there is a problem where the top of the thigh tucks inside of this, or where you sort of have like a little bit of plastic, like this part, gets tucked inside the joint. I don't have any issues with that so far. Knock on wood, it doesn't give me any problems later on. I like to go forward and back. There's a mild swivel at the top, just more so with the way that that's attached. There's a double hinge on the knee. And then there's the articulation, of course, in the foot that goes up and down this way, ankle pivot this way, and the foot also has toe articulation. You can see right there. Great looking Superman figure. Even if you're not crazy. I mean, I'm for me, there goes the fist again. Why do I keep losing Superman's hands like that? I have to go back. Is it right there? There it is. There it is right there. I don't know why this one hand just continues to want to escape away from me. Does it know something I don't? Nice looking Superman figure. Um, yeah, as I was saying, it's not something maybe everybody likes the design of the DC Rebirth. I mean, Superman certainly loses a little bit of red when he gets his DC Rebirth outfit, more favoring all the blue. Gotta say though, the outfit does work for him, whether I can actually get him to stand or not. There we go. Yeah, nice looking Superman. This one's bigger, uh, certainly a more muscular looking Superman than the ones we've gotten before. And again, you know what, if you wanted to, let's just, I'm going to put him on his display stand just because again, he's, he's giving me difficult times. Nothing like, nothing worse than really wrapping up these reviews where you have a figure that just doesn't want to stand for you. Let's get him back onto his display stand. Let's, let's take a problem and solve it. There we go. That's better. Yeah between the hand popping off and figure a figure like Superman not standing properly. As I was saying, though, it's not a look that everybody loves. The DC Rebirth Superman sort of is questionable among many collectors as to whether this is a good Superman 
outfit or not. I mean, he does lose a lot of the red. Some would say he should have lost the red in his underoos earlier because it looks a little ridiculous on the character. I like it because it's more traditional looking Superman. I mean, certainly, even though I'm not as attached to DC Rebirth for, uh, for being Superman's costumes, uh, they could certainly as well use this body for a later release down the road. Whether it be New 52 Superman, I would love to see how they could approach a New 52 Superman. Or again, just using this same body. This body would work really well, and again, I think it already has worked for Bizarro. Re-release this figure again in a more classic Superman outfit. Bringing back the red boots then would of course work well to the sculpting that they just left behind there on the, on the legs anyways. And then putting, of course, the red in his lower underoos gives a classic looking Superman. Got to say, though, I still like the look of the Superman quite a bit. It might be pretty high on my list of so far all time favorite Superman that McFarlane toys have released so far. Here in final looks, I opted to have the Man of Steel in flight. And this can be accomplished, by the way, of just taking the waist clip. And instead of having it upright where you'd have Superman levitating, just have it leaning forward parallel to the display base. And you can effectively have the Man of Steel in flight. Something that I was able to do a lot better here than maybe not as much in the actual review. The head tilts a lot further back than what I initially stated. And even having the, the figure slightly off angled, it really gives you a nice effective look of having Superman flying towards you. Going back to the mentioned uh, point before about the close fist, yeah, it sucks that the figure doesn't come with any other swappable hands. It seems always to be the case when it comes to the DC Multiverse stuff that as soon as they give them a flight stand, they always seem to kind of forfeit some of the accessories. The only exception to that rule has so far been Batman Beyond, Terry McGinnis. He came in clue with a flight stand, and he also came in clue with all of his accessories. For some reason, Superman just doesn't get as much love. As soon as he gets this flight stand, he almost has to lose something else. And what he ended up losing, probably, was swappable hands. But the close fits still work well, even in the pose that I've got him going on right now. It gives him some strength, some power behind his flight. And likely, this is going to be something that's going to continue on, at least this pose, as soon as the camera's finished recording. I'm going to probably put him on the shelf looking exactly like this. Even though, admittingly, DC Rebirth isn't my favorite costume for the Man of Steel, I'm kind of favoring a little bit of the New 52. I always like the look of the New 52 suit. That may be something that we may get later on in the pipeline from the McFarlane team. But I'm also more of a purist, too. I always traditionally think of Superman having the red underoos. I know some people don't like when I call them red underoos. But having the underoos in red, having the lower boots in red, that's classic soups to me. And I feel like that doesn't need to be changed. Same with the same also with Batman. Batman doesn't have to have losing the lower black under ruse. We still call him under ruse. I, that's for me, the classic look of these characters. And even though this is the DC rebirth, Superman going to just alienating, that's no pun intended, alienating the red under ruse and the red boots in favor of an all blue outfit, this body and the sculpt that they did to his face is probably one of the best Superman in my personal opinion that we've gotten so far from the DC Rebirth. Could they repackage this guy, rebrand this guy as a new 52 Superman? Absolutely, using the same body. And even further to that, just re-release this, this exact mold. They don't even have to change the head sculpt at all and give us a classic looking Superman. This body would work really in favor of that. And one thing that goes well for this figure that hasn't really been the case so far with the other Superman. The other Superman have had very muscular bodies, but easily this Superman is thick. Thick in the neck, thick in the torso. He's a bigger, bulkier Superman. The really the way that Superman should be anyways. He should be a lot bigger than the other figures we've gotten in this wave. And easily by far, not only is he the biggest Superman that we've gotten, but I also feel like he's the best Superman that we've gotten. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys feel about the DC Rebirth Superman. Good figure? Bad figure? Weigh in your thoughts certainly down below. And also, too, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn on the bell notification, and keep peepers peeled while we have wrapped up things for DC Rebirth Superman. There will be other DC, not multiverse, but DC figures as a whole coming soon to this channel. We may be looking at DC multiverse stuff. We may be also looking at DC statues and other figures, too. Hmm, lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, make sure you keep your peepers peeled to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.